The Holocaust is by far one of the most horrific events in human history. Man's inhumanity towards man is truly shocking. It is the murder of approximately 6 million Jewish men, women and children across concentration camps and ghettos in Nazi-occupied Europe. January 27th every year is Holocaust Memorial Day. This year is about remembering the individual people who were murdered in the Holocaust. In short, it's about rehumanizing the victims. In Hebrew, the Holocaust is known as the Shoah. This translates to catastrophe. On the 9th of November 2022, I went on a trip with the Holocaust Education Trust to visit one of the biggest of these camps, Auschwitz-Birkenau. The camps are located in Auschwitz-Birkenau in southern Poland. It's a normal place you wouldn't know, standing in a town centre, that such horrific events occurred less than two miles away from where you were standing. Much of the population before the war was Jewish. In fact, before the war, Auschwitz was home to what was considered one of the most beautiful synagogues in Europe. However, after the Nazis took over the town, this was dismantled. Now all that stands there is a memorial. The sad part about this is, less than 100 metres from where the synagogue once stood, is a seminary school for a bunch of Christianities infamous for its anti-Semitism. This shows how people who were not affected by the Holocaust, in some ways turned a blind eye to them. Now on to Auschwitz. Before the war it was used as Polish army barracks. However, after the Polish army fell in a matter of days, the Nazis took it over and decided to use it for its most infamous purpose. The blocks of Auschwitz are still standing, and they are used as museums for the people who were there and the people who suffered. When walking into Auschwitz, the first thing you see is the famous gate with Albeit Mach Freien written on it. This translates to work sets you free. This shows how Nazis used deception to attempt to trick their victims into thinking that their homes at these concentration camps were purely temporary and they would just be there for work. In one of the blocks to Auschwitz, we find what's known as the Book of Names. This contains about 4.2 million names of those killed in the Holocaust. This is not all of them, however, as at least 6 million Jewish people were killed and many other minorities. Finding names for this book is incredibly difficult, as many victims we don't know their identity to, and the Nazis destroyed a lot of evidence before the camps were liberated, so finding names is incredibly difficult. Throughout the visit to Auschwitz, we saw many personal effects from people who were kept there, and people who were murdered there. We saw pots and pans. This showed that they were coming to live a normal life here. We saw prayer shells. This shows how even in such dire circumstances some people can't manage to keep their faith. We also saw a display of approximately 80,000 shoes of those who arrived at Auschwitz. One of the most shocking parts of this display was a small shoe just off the main pile that clearly belonged to a young child. This is a particularly emotional part of that as we can have a good guess that this child was most likely murdered on arrival. We then moved on to the memorial for the first execution in Auschwitz. These were not done in a gas chamber, these were done by firing squad in the courtyard of Block 11. On the 11th of November 1942, 76 people were shot in the backs of their heads. We also spent a short time in the gas chambers in Auschwitz. These were used to kill a huge number of people at one time, and after the gas chambers at Birkenau were opened, this became an officer's quarters for guards of the SS. We moved on to Birkenau. It's located a short five minute coach ride from Auschwitz 1, and it would come into operation in 1942 as the death camp for Auschwitz. The image of its gates with the railway line leading up to them have become infamous as a symbol of the Holocaust and as a symbol of the atrocities committed by the Nazis across Europe throughout World War II. Birkenau looks very different to Auschwitz. It looks more how concentration camps are represented to look in the media. While walking around we saw remains of the original huts as well as mock-ups of what the huts would have looked like as the camp was liberated. Our time spent in Birkenau was short but deeply emotional. The day ended with a candlelit service for the victims of the Holocaust and the victims of all genocides. 
it contained some prayers as well as poetry readings from victims and survivors. It was a time that I used to reflect on my thoughts and experiences throughout the day, but also to reflect on what I had seen and how I could tell this story. And I want to share with you a testimony of a man called Leon Greenman. You might not have heard of him, but he is a survivor of the Holocaust. Leon's story is particularly unique, as he was a British citizen. On the 8th of October 1942, Leon and his family were taken from their home on the outskirts of Rotterdam and taken to Westbrook concentration camp. On the 18th of January 1943, Leon, his wife Escher and their son Barney were deported to Auschwitz concentration camp. This is despite the fact that the family were still waiting for documents that would have confirmed their British citizenship. This could have saved their lives. On the 21st of January 1943, Leon was separated from his family upon selection at Birkenau. There were 750 people on the train that arrived that day. 50 were selected for slave labour, the other 700 were selected to be murdered. This includes Barney and Escher. That was the last time Leon saw his wife and child. March 7th, 1943, Leon is moved to Auschwitz. Six months later, he is then moved to Monowitz, where he stayed for 18 months. From there, they are marched 90 kilometres to Geldwitz, where they are deported to Butchwald. On the 11th of April, 1945, the American Third Army liberated Butchwald concentration camp. Although Leon was free from Nazi persecution, they were still kept there for a further three weeks so they could recover from the horrendous conditions in which they were kept by the Nazis. On the 24th of April 1945, Leon is given permission to leave Butchenwald. He then meets a journalist called Anne Matheson from the Evening Standard. She then writes an article that is published about Leon and his experiences. This was a relief for Leon's surviving family in England as this was the first time they'd heard of him since the war started. On the 24th of February 1998, Leon received an OBE. He had been talking about his experiences in the Holocaust since 1946. Sadly, however, on the 7th of March 2008, Leon sadly passed away, peacefully in his sleep. The reason I want you to hear this story is it is a true tragedy. Leon is not the only victim of the Holocaust, nor is he the most famous. But his story is particularly interesting. In an ideal world, we would be able to tell all victim testimonies. However, this is simply not possible, as many victims' testimonies are unknown because we don't know where they went or what happened to them, and many victims, simply, we don't know who they are. So, we can't tell all their stories, though we would like to. Despite that fact, it is still important to remember the Holocaust. Because if we fail to remember the Holocaust, we are doomed to nothing more than repeat the horrific genocide committed by the Nazis. That is why Holocaust education is important. 